With Las Vegas in the rear view, it's time to turn our attention to Phoenix. Brian will be on site yet again. Make sure you are looking out for him uh, and saying hello if you do see him. If you're going to be at the race, make sure you send him a message on Twitter. Uh, you guys can definitely find a way to link up. We will react to everything we saw in Vegas. We will talk DraftKings. We will talk our betting cards. We'll talk what went right, what went wrong, um, all that. And get you set for the outright market and more on uh, today's Angle of Pursuit podcast. Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on Brad. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Ryan Twining, back from Vegas, even if only for a minute, to talk all things <laughs> Vegas and prep people for Phoenix. Before you head out to the track yet again, I guess let's talk the race. We'll obviously drive in, d- dive in and look at our drivers from DraftKings and from the betting card. But I guess what was your biggest takeaway from the weekend and, um, you know, uh, thoughts in terms of what we saw in the Pennzoil 400? Yeah, you know, obviously for me, uh, if you saw my tweets Sunday morning, I was on Ryan Blaney, Tyler Reddick, and Bubba Wallace to potentially win. So having guys finish second and third yet again is very disappointing. And especially for Tyler Reddick, who for all intents and purposes was the best car on track during the day, considering the fact that he had to come from the middle of the pack multiple times because of yet again, Pit road errors, which he kind of lamented post-race by saying same shit, different year. So, you know, it was kind of disappointing there. I do think one of the biggest takeaways, however, was that unlike last year, cars were able to make significant movement throughout the field, even in dirty air. I mean, you saw guys like Noah Gregson, um, especially late after that late pit cycle, make his way up to the front inside the top 10. Uh, I thought it was extremely impressive watching Ty Gibbs stay up there. It just goes to show you the Toyotas were hooked up this spring. I mean, obviously Reddick was the only one I thought had race winning speed to compete with Kyle Larson. And of course the trash bag. If the trash bag does not get attached to William Byron's front, we're possibly looking at a three horse race yet again for, for the, the Penzo 400 because By- Byron's car was as good maybe slightly not as good as kyle larson so you know that that was disappointing yeah no i feel like there was four cars that had a very maybe probably five i think i think larson obviously had a great shot blaney and reddick and then byron and and ross chastain yeah chastain too but i chastain was good during the day but you didn't see him making up the type of ground that you would have expected because he got up to the front by taking two tires while everybody else took four late. Yeah. And we, we've we known this since the implementation of the next-gen car. Clean air is king, and especially here at Vegas, where if you can cut the air off of somebody's nose, which is how Larson won by essentially air-blocking Reddick into that last corner with one to go, um, you, know, you can maintain track position. And Chastain did a fantastic job of doing that, still snagging a top five after pretty much running outside the top ten for yeah. a lot of the day. And that's why I kind of like he, him and Byron both like Byron, I think had a good car. Obviously the trash bag incident makes him not in contention, but I also like, even at the end when he was, he was able to get a top 10, but wasn't really able, like if he had flown through the field, like Reddick did, I would have been like, okay, he had a very good chance. Reddick was able to move through that field and, and really make some, some, uh, some headway. I think him and Larson clearly were the best yeah, and then kind of Blaney on his own and then Chastain and Byron. But all five of those cars are really, really strong. Um, pretty good to see kind of overall. Uh, we talked a little bit about it, even with the Logano tickets in our pocket, we weren't super optimistic about, uh, his run. And it's funny. Cause I remember Wormy. um, I, I don't know if it was last year or maybe two years ago talking about the Penske garage and like, if they have a good car, then Blaney and Logano will be good. And if they don't have a good car, Logano finds a way to kind of get stuff there that's maybe not there. But uh, somewhere at the end of last year, I think that's kind of switched, obviously, with yeah. Logano out of the playoffs, Blaney in. But Blaney seems to be getting a lot out of his car, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not 
you know, where it needs to be. And he's outperforming Logano and he's outperforming of Austin Spindrick um, <laughs> every week. So it's kind of interesting to see. Yeah, no, uh, Blaney was really good. I mean, the problem with him and I think a little bit with Reddick was for, for Reddick more so it was about losing track position so often, but both of those cars, they needed really long runs to really come in. And, you know, Blaney's probably a little bit longer than Reddick's to where when you started getting into those, you know, 40, 45 lap green flag runs there, Blaney's car was, you know, top three, definitely. So yeah. It just it was just hard for him to get up to the front quick enough to actually compete. And, you know, Larson's car just fired off like a freaking rocket ship. I mean, yeah. when you look at that last restart coming out of stage two, he he had like taken a 10 car lead while the rest of the, the pack was battling three wide behind him, like two to three rows deep. So uh, overall, Kyle Larson, still the class of the field. I mean. I'm glad that I actually jumped on a championship future while I was in Vegas at Circa at plus 740. Um, very happy to be holding that ticket now because I looked and he's like five to one now to win the championship. But still pissed that Tyler Reddick did not win because I did add him again at 14 to one uh, on Sunday. So I was pretty exposed to Red Dog. Yeah, we talked about it as like, a, a, you know, the 2311 garage kind of as a whole. And obviously Bubba had his issues and was kind of out of the race pretty quickly. But, um, you know, it, we, we expected a lot from that garage mm -hmm. and expected them to have a strong performance. Um, I am going to throw up DraftKings. Uh, let's see, I'll present my share screen. Um, I will say there was some sort of stuff. Because I mean, we made three lineups on the podcast. Um, pretty convinced I entered him into the th the three max entry contest. Went to check after uh, the race had started, and they were not there. So either uh, I thought I did it and I wasn't logged in, or I had um, thought I did it and got distracted and never actually did it. So. Uh, one of those two things, but we did, I did enter a few lineups, which made me even more baffled because it's not like I didn't enter any. Um, <laughs> so we can review those. I, I used a lot of the stuff we talked about and kind of figure out, um, you know, what we're right, what we're wrong. So it was a little bit of a frustrating week on DraftKings because you really had to be, I feel like you really had to be on your game. Um, the, yeah. the, the points scored, like you had to put up points and you had to like have everything click. Cause like, I had Larson, who was the guy you needed. I had Reddick, and I had Chastain. And normally, that's at least good enough to get you in, like the conversation for cash. Um, but apparently, Alex Bowman, John Hunter Nemechek, and Todd Gilliland aren't enough to get you in the conversation for cash. So yeah, I feel like um, Noah Gregson was definitely part of the optimal lineup starting 30th or 31st, whatever it is inside. The, I finished. And six. we talked about him. I told you top 10. I don't know why I didn't put him on the betting card. I didn't write him <laughs> up in the sub stack. I'm so mad at myself. I love Noah Gregson. Uh, his number to top 10 was great. I, I don't, I'm not, it must've been, it must've been a weird week for me. Cause like there's just stuff missing. Um, maybe it's from the, the three month that three month old that I'm taking care of on a daily basis. Um, but it's been, it's been a little frustrating for sure, but yeah, he was, he was really, really good. Um, it was good to see, uh, shouts to Alex Bowman for being in the top 10 and then just like sinking like a rock at the end of the race and not even finishing well, anywhere near there. And I think that's the complete opposite of what happened with Noah Gregson because he wasn't in the top 10 the entire day until late after the i think it was the lit the last restart we had where he finally cracked the top 10 and was able to get past some of the guys who had just been kind of middling yeah. there throughout the day and his car was just hooked up at the end as opposed to but he also showed one yeah he also showed speed and was actually like challenging up near reddick and blaney at the end obviously he ended up sinking a little bit but he was pushing it and he was flirting with the top five for a little while. Um, and I was so ready to give you shit because you're like, he's not going to be top 10. And I was like, you're right. He's going to be top five. Um, <laughs> and then obviously he sank to like eighth or something. So, uh, you know, overall, not not the ideal uh, performance from some guys. But it was good to see him perform a little bit better. And uh, SHR as a whole just to kind of be okay. 
Um, so this is this is basically a similar version I built, but I used Byron, who wasn't obviously very um, good. So you needed the red dog here to uh, be interesting. And then Harrison Burton. I was kind of excited about him um, as a potential option, especially with the yeah. uh, Penske garage stuff, but he sucked. So um, not the week on DraftKings. And honestly, as we flip over and talk betting, not the week on the betting card either, but I feel like we got some stuff right. I feel like we had the right angles. We just didn't end up with the right stuff at the end. So um, obviously there's going to be weeks like Atlanta where we crush it and we have monster, monster weeks. Um, and then there's going to be other weeks where we have an average week or a small loss week. Hey, I and still that, profited a couple units. Well, that's that's what I'm talking about. Even when and like, that's it. It was because of the ad of the Larson number. And I feel like when you go into a race like that, when somebody is that big of a favorite and you don't have any action on it, like you're, you're asking to lose, like yeah. you need to hedge your way out of some of those longer shot bets that we had, you know, like the Bubba and the 10 cent or dollar centric wager, you know, stuff like that by going with the favorite. And we talked about him so much on Saturday and we're like, bet the outright. Did we, did I add the championship future onto the betting card? No, did it real life. Yeah. Didn't add it on here. Yeah. Me uh, did I, did I add him as an outright on the betting card? No. Uh, you know, should, should have done that. Should have, should have listened to my own advice. So hopefully a few of you are smarter and able to take uh, the information that Brian and I are giving out and actually do something positive with it instead of just leaving it in our back pocket and uh, letting it, um, you know, go up in flames, as they say. So, well, uh, and betting- then also, too, I, I think so on Sunday, one of my favorite bets that I placed while I was in Vegas, uh, it was two of them. I, I re added Ryan Blaney, top Ford, and Tyler Reddick, top Toyota. Yeah. I think I got, I got Reddick at like, plus 375 Sunday morning to top Toyota at, mm. at Caesars, I believe. And you know, it, you saw from practice, he was clearly like the best car on the long run. And if we got those extended runs, he was going to be there. And sure enough, he was. And you'll never believe it, Brian uh, on, on our sub stack. I wrote up Bubba Wallace as the top Toyota at four to one. And I even made a point about, uh, his biggest competition being Tyler Reddick, who's also four to one. So I was looking at this on, uh, and I said, betting both drivers could be an interesting way to play it. If you want more safety, you'll get paid out two to one on one of, if one of them is top Toyota. Did I listen well, to my own advice? No. Ironically enough, that's exactly what I did. in uh-huh. Vegas, is I had both of them. I'm glad there's one of us who's at least using their brain every once in a while. Uh. So. Um, and then I went all in on Alex, on Alex Bowman to top 10. And obviously that didn't work out. So the Byron, I, you know, we talked about him. He was good. The bag didn't help, but I don't know that he was, um, you know, as fast as Reddick or Larson, the Chastain yeah. one we talked about had a chance at the end. And then Logano and Cindric obviously were kind of mid pack at, at best. Um, it'll be interesting to see when we go back again and Logano puts it on pole again and then we're like Joey you're gonna commit you're gonna do anything this time no I'm just gonna ride around mid-pack or or hang out in the back and we'll call it a day what's funny Um, though is like I I can almost see a a a repeat of Kyle Larson just absolutely throttling the field because one thing that they do talk about with him is with him is that he likes a looser car because he's better on the wheel no Racing, dirt racing and all that type of stuff and when we get there in october it's going to be hot as hell L- slick less grip like that works perfectly into kyle larson's driving style and i was really impressed with reddick and how he was able to throw it up against the wall he did not care he um you know if larson went down he went up he and then larson would move to block him and he'd go down like he was he was really doing some driving i guess my question for you brian as we kind of review the rest of your betting card should we be focusing on Reddick as a potential championship future? And is he kind of in a same spot as Ryan Blaney where he's showing signs, but like the nonsense that happens with his pit crew. And maybe that's something we get figured out as the season goes along. And maybe we're patient. Maybe we wait till the number balloons out a little bit after a few more winners pile up. But, you know, we do expect him to be in contention, and a lot of these races, we're going to get to the East Coast swing once we leave Phoenix. 
that's going to be interesting. There's going to be some spots for him to win. So I don't want to also don't want to miss the number. Um, so where are you at, you know, as we, uh, you know, we'll recap your rest of your card here in a second, but you know, I've seen him as long as like 16 or 18 to one, like, are, are you interested at that price or, um, you know, do you think he's maybe, um, you know, wait, wait for it to balloon. And if we miss out cause he wins, then we miss out and it doesn't really shrink that much. I, I don't hate jumping on the 18 to one. The one thing I will caution people about is that last year we got him at 25 to one and that was after he had already won a race. So, you know, because we've only seen three events yet, the expectation though, was that Reddick was going to be good here in Las Vegas. Now we go to Phoenix where he's got split results in each of the last two years. The spring races have been fantastic for him. Top fives in both of those, but you know, new body style, a uh, new short track package, smaller diffuser, all that stuff. A lot of teams are going to be kind of tinkering with things. That's why we get a 50 minute practice session on Friday. I yeah. cannot wait for that. That'll be really um, good for us. So, you know, it, I think for me, it's almost a wait and see situation because after, after Phoenix, we go to Bristol, which I mean, that's not one of Reddick's better tracks. So, you know, I, I'm not thinking that he's going to win Bristol and then Phoenix. I really, I mean, no, no shot at him, but I, I wouldn't consider him one of the favorites when you got the Fords who have always traditionally done well here and Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney, because Logano's not out of the playoffs at this moment. I expect him to perform really well. Blaney's is fantastic here. Ross Chastain is incredible here. William Byron and Kyle Larson are really good here. And Christopher Bell. Like, yeah, I would put Reddick as maybe the sixth or seventh best guy at at, at best here yeah. for this. So maybe so we, I, maybe I wouldn't we jump on it. the number just yet. Yeah. Maybe we ride it out through Phoenix, through Bristol, and then we have the Circuit of the Americas. Maybe he's a little more interested right before there, so we jump on that. Um, I mean, honestly, that would almost be a situation, though, where you would hope that he doesn't win Coda mm -hmm. and then jump on the number afterwards. Because I guarantee you, when we get to Coda, it's going to be Reddick, probably probably at the Larson number we see right now, five to one, five and a half to one, possibly, to win that race. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That if he doesn't win there, maybe you, you bet a little bit on him before that race, and then if he doesn't win... You come back and hit it again. Maybe you get a twenty-five or something, and then you're yep, you're sitting pretty. Um, all right, so let's talk about your card. Obviously, you uh, found exposure to the outright market in a lot of spots, uh, but you did grab some Larson, which ended up helping you have a winning week. Um, you know, like you mentioned, Chastain was there. Uh, KFB and Bubba had their issues. Byron was there. Reddick was there. Blaney was there. Like you, you got onto the right options. You didn't just, you know, spray the board at longer odds and, and not get paid out um, as you should. So that that is good to see. Um, obviously, you're, you know, Blaney top forward, um, Reddick top five. Those are both nice. Um, I'm still mad about our Bubba bets because I feel like he would have been really strong. And we got really good numbers on the under 14 and a half. Yeah, looking back on it, I feel like the under 14 and a half and the top 10 sides may have like the top 10 sides may have hit. I still feel confident that 14 and a half would have, but looking at the Wallace Gibbs matchup that I added late, I'm not so sure that would have came to fruition because Ty Gibbs was fantastic and those yeah. JGR cars, they really improved from what we saw in practice. So I almost feel like that was the wrong side yep. on that. One. Yep. Yeah, so overall uh, we're both still up a bunch. Um, you pass me a little bit. Um, so that's, you know, it'll be a fun contest as we kind of go along throughout the season um, and, and see. Uh, it's interesting that despite us having like different amounts of bets every week, we each have <laughs> uh, 21 losses through through so far. So unit, um, unit allocation, too. That's the thing there because you hit you hit Suarez, I believe, for a, a half a unit and I hit him for only a quarter. Yep. So that, you know, that plays a big difference there. Mm hmm. Yep. Trying to be a little more patient, trying not to get so aggressive on the board. And obviously two super speedways uh, help with that. So we'll uh, we'll turn our attention. Let's go to Phoenix, where the top of the board is compelling to me. There's probably. Honestly, four guys that I really want to bet, um, but I'm not sure how to do that. And their numbers are so short that I'm going to be patient and wait for the value to appear, whether that's top manufacturer, 
whether that's, you know, they don't qualify quite as well in their outright odds move. Uh, but Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, William Byron and Ross Chastain, I think are pretty, pretty clearly like the, the four that jump out to me, obviously Denny Hamlin in terms of price is right there. Um, and if you go to shorter, flatter tracks from 2023, uh, Denny actually has the best speed ranking in front of Byron, in front of Blaney, in front of Larson, um, you know, seventh at Phoenix, seventh at Richmond, third at Gateway, fifth at New Hampshire, um, Richmond two, he was number one, obviously. And then Phoenix again, number 10. So, you know, pretty solid across the board where Phoenix seems to kind of be his worst of the track. That's all via ifantasyrace.com, by the way. So make sure you're following Ryan on Twitter at ifantasyrace and, and checking out his site because he's got a ton of really good charts and information things that he kind of cobbles together for us to to use as we make our decisions, both betting and uh, on DraftKings. Yeah, Ryan's stuff is, if you're not if you're not looking at his, even his free stuff is better than a lot of the offerings that you can find out there yeah um okay so in terms of the short guys inside kind of 10 to 1 um you know it, do you have a strong feeling towards one or two of these names are you kind of in a similar boat as i am where you're just like waiting to see what happens or uh where are you at mentally yeah i feel like because we're coming into a race with another first going to the new short track package and i thought it was really interesting that kyle larson um, in reference to testing the new short track package, acknowledged that he didn't even really remember what went on during that test. So, I mean, if the best driver in the sport is still uh, a little bit just kind of like, oh, well, I, I don't know, we'll see Friday. Um, I'm kind of in a wait and see mode, especially like Ryan Blaney's been fantastic qualifying here, but I mean, what's that going to go down to six to one? Because you know, Larson is still going to be up there. Um, super short. Byron has always qualified well. Ross Chastain's number is not interesting at all because he's never qualified all that well here or never qualifies well for that matter. I mean, last week he started freaking 20th for gosh sakes. Wow. Um, the so one thing his I number will is probably going to get longer. Is he does have a 10 to 1 out there in market where he's kind of like, you know, seven or eight or nine in most places. So if you can get the 10, I don't hate that. I'm the only thing is like, I think this will be the first time. I mean, it, we said this about Las Vegas, but in reality, if almost a full hour of practice, like we're going to get to see guys and how they're coming into this weekend. And if books repost lines post practice, I think we're really going to see who we should be betting. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's especially because there's all these guys that are really short. Like if there was a 20 or something on one of these guys, yeah, exactly. or even a 14, I might be a little more interested. I will say that Chastain traditionally at Phoenix and a mile and a half or miles in general, um, you know, hasn't qualified super, super well. But last year he qualified sixth and eighth. So both inside the top 10, obviously neither of them are on the pole. And that's um, not going to move that number, though. That's the that's, thing. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, so yeah, I think I think at the top of the board, being patient is probably the move. Um, I mean, I, I honestly though, I don't hate grabbing Kyle Larson if you can get him at mm. six or above. Look, this guy is going to be the favorite he smacks every it on pole, race going forward. Yeah, if he smacks it on pole and it looks like the dominant, they're going to shrink that number to four, four, four and yeah, a half. Yeah, three. Yeah, I I feel like a. Uh, 2020 what, what year is that 2021, 2021? for for kyle larson might be <laughs> incoming here that was a good year i that was the year i got him at 12 to 1 to win the championship i can't oh gosh we'll, ne we'll never see that number ever again no no for as long as he's yeah. in the sport until he leaves hendrick all right is. so rank them for me uh larson blaney byron chastain and hamlin in terms of who you're most excited or like who you like in terms of like, before we go to qualifying, obviously things can change, but if you had to bet them now, what's the order that you're betting them or like, give me like the, maybe your top three of the five. Oh, it's um, I think Ryan Blaney. I mean, as strong as anybody in Phoenix, the last two years, I don't think there, I don't think there's an argument to be made that there's any one driver that you would have rather had in like a one and done 
scenario at Phoenix over Ryan Blaney. So Blaney's number one. Uh, I think just because of the way the odds sit right now, I would rather bet Chastain over Larson. And for that purpose, it would be Blaney, Chastain, Larson, Byron would be the order of the guys that I would go with. Yeah, that that feels pretty spot on. But like also Byron was number one speed ranking in the spring last year. He was number two in the fall. He was number one at Richmond, Um, obviously had some issues at Richmond too and New Hampshire, but (laughs) (laughs) it's so funny because I remember every single race last year be like, why is William Byron priced yeah, right? where he is? And every week we just we just line up to bet him, and it worked a bunch. Um, and I feel like and we're I doing almost it again. feel like we're still in that same thing. It's like the books still haven't properly adjusted to his skill le- yeah. right now. Yeah, it's so funny. It's just because it, it's and it's hard because at some point, like you have to you have to lower somebody's odds. You can't have everybody at like three to one because you won't take money. So yeah. uh, Byron's really interesting. I. I you're, I think I agree with the the order you put it in, um, but wouldn't wouldn't fault anybody. Let us know down in the comments of the guys at the top of the board. You know, Denny, Ross, Byron, Blaney, and Larson. Who's your number one? Who's your number two um, targets? If you had to bet in that range, uh, let's keep it rolling. Let's talk about the next range because I think there's interesting options. Um, obviously, as we tumble down the board. Truex, 10, 11. He looked pretty good again last week. Um, Not race winning speed, though. That's the thing. It's like he's like in that. He's he is Kevin Harvick. He's taken over the mantle. Yeah. Chris Bell, 10 to 1, uh, 11 to 1. Kyle Busch, as long as 13. Logano, as long as 13. Red Dog, as long as 16. I do Uh, not hate. Look, I'm going to say this again. Uh, I might be a broken record a lot this year, but. Joey Logano at 14 to one. I don't hate that. Just knowing how good Penske has been here. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't really care that he sunk at Vegas, like two different driving styles, two different tracks, two different setups. Logano is a qualifying machine this season. And what if, what if he puts it on the front row again? This is probably sinking in the single digits. And you're looking at CLV at these bets. You bet him on this number. It drops down inside 10 to 1. And then you you hedge him in a matchup. Or you, you bet him not to top 5 or something like that to try to hopefully get back some of your, your wager on the outright. That is probably way less than what you're having to put on Kyle Larson at 5 to 1 or 4.5 to 1, which is what he's probably going to pop, up, pop off on. Yeah. Yeah, so I would, uh, yeah, if you love Logano, you're like, he is definitely going on my card this week, grab him now. Um, if you're just like, whatever on him, like, if you want to grab a piece, wouldn't blame you. And if you're like, he sucks, you don't have to bet him and you can watch him not do well in the, by the end of the race. But yeah, Brian's, you know, 14 to 1, decent number. Um, could get shorter. And he could I, absolutely say, be- I, I think even the books realize like they they had gotten too excited by reposting him at eight to one and for some damn reason people bet him down to five and a half to one on caesars before we went green on it's the it's our it's what we did brian we it's a, the effect of our podcast everybody watches mm-hmm. and they saw it and they're like oh we gotta go bet him now not at that price <laughs> hell no uh no but it is it is nice that when that happens, cause you feel like you're onto the right path and you're like seeing yeah. the board. Well, even if it doesn't, you know, it's a process over results. I know it's frustrating when the bets don't hit. And I know it oh. sucks when your bank, when your when your bankroll is less than it was before. But when you're, if you're consistently doing that, if you're consistently finding value, you're going to win more bets over the course of your lifetime. And you're going to see that results. Yep. So stay with it, be patient, bet the the drivers and make it work. Uh, Chase Elliott, Ty Gibbs kind of is the last two guys that are inside 20 to one anywhere. Um, so you like Logano. Do you like Reddick, Chase Elliott, Gibbs or anyone else? Um, but, you know, between basically between Truex and Ty Gibbs. 
Look, I'm not I'm not saying go bet that number on Logano. I'm just saying if you feel optimistic about his qualifying efforts, I don't hate it because he has put it on pole here before. Um I would prefer it to be like 16 to 1 number on Tyler Reddick. And although Reddick hasn't performed well here, I mean that car is hooked up this season. But I really don't have a lean on any of these guys, even even Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, and Martin Truex Jr. I I really want to see what what they bring to the table in practice and then what we get out of qualifying to see track position because you're going to get a bunch of money on the top four or five guys. Like, you know, Kyle Larson, William Byron, Ryan Blaney are all going to qualify really well. And if they all are starting the race, one, two, three, you're going to probably see very limited movement out of any of these guys' odds, even if they start, you know, third row third or fourth row so i i'm probably in a wait and see mode on outrights this week would you so bell is you can get at 10 to 1 who i'm really interested in but ross is also you can get as long as 10 to 1 if you had is, is ross clearly a tier above bell for you oh I, yeah i i would much rather bet uh ross chastain look i tweeted after the race on sunday he has been the come get, the comeback king in 2024 so far. Had it not been for penalties at Daytona and Atlanta, we're possibly talking about the guy who has been the winner of both super speedway races. And then this last week, again, another pit road speeding penalty, throwing him back at the rear of the pack. He luckily gets back on the lead lap because of a, a late caution. Like, this guy is a top five car and has been at all three races so far in 2024. And I don't expect that to change at the track. They freaking won last yeah. year, becoming the first non championship four contender to win the, the race. Like Chastain is on a different level right now. And that track house team for what it's worth is definitely taking a step up. I mean, Suarez winning in Atlanta and then even last week competing near the top 10 and up front for some parts of the race as well. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm with you. They're just, it's interesting because he was, you know, obviously chat, uh, uh, Christopher Bell, that's who I was thinking of, um, was, was in the final four, obviously had his big issue and that's why he didn't end up finishing the race, but he's really strong. He's been really good here. And, um, you know, looking at Ryan's, uh, speed rankings, fourth at Phoenix one, third at Richmond, seventh at New Hampshire, and then uh, even with his issues, ninth at uh, Phoenix too. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, speaking of kind of interesting, I want to talk about Christopher Busher as we dive into the next range because um, finished fifth in the uh, in the spring race, 15th in the – or fifth in the fall race, 15th in the spring race. Um, but if you look at – he's actually eighth in terms of total speed rankings over shorter flatter um with uh where was he okay 13th at phoenix one so not great 12th at R richmond uh 14th at gateway but then 13th at new hampshire second at richmond two and fourth at phoenix two so he got better as the season went along maybe it's a weather thing maybe it's a you know a, a luck thing and he just happened to bring a really good car but rfk is getting better as a team their car is better every year 20 to one, like, am I just reaching grasping for straws here or is there something there? Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> I Look, like I said, there's way too many unknowns here. We didn't even get to see Busher run Vegas yeah. because he freaking wrecked like yeah. before, before we even ran 10 laps. So it's and, crazy because that that's the second week in a row where we've had like an early exit for a few guys. Yeah. Yeah. And also too, like Kislowski look like shit too. So, I mean, clearly they, they missed the setup in Vegas and that's kind of worrisome as we go to another track that is an unknown, very limited time in the sim and all that stuff for the new package, new body style. I, I gotta, I gotta see something out of them before I'm betting they're outright. Yeah. Um, all right. I am going to add someone to the card as you oh, no. mentioned the guy you tweeted out because <laughs> Um, there is a corner of this podcast that is dedicated to SHR and Chase Briscoe, um, and and somehow my corner is being impacted by someone else who wants to get on board. So, are you just interested in Briscoe for the uh, poll, or are you actually interested in him as a potential race winner? 
look, because of what we saw out of SHR last year, how much shorter can these odds get regardless of whether or not he pulls it? 15 to 1? 14 to 1? Yeah, I mean... Like, the fact I know that's, that... that's a significant cut, but yeah. if he does do what I tweeted about and... I do think it's really it's really interesting. Like everything is kind of falling in line there with the same year that he had speed qualifying was the same year that Joey Logano put it at pole at on Las Vegas during the spring. So like and also too Briscoe. Briscoe, the same year that he had speed at Vegas, where he qualified fourth, this year he qualified sixth. He was a qualifying machine at all the other short tracks. So I'd, I'd rather hit the qualifying number whenever that gets available or uh, we'll, we'll see here in a second and wait for a potential outright that is, you know, 15 or 16. Yeah, just because like with Larson, Blaney, Byron, Chastain, Hamlin, Truex, Bell, like there's so many guys that we think can be really good that are already priced aggressively. The yeah. odds of Chase Briscoe jumping any or all of them is pretty low. That being said, I have to reclaim what is rightfully mine. And Chase Briscoe, 25 to 1 for half a unit is going on the betting card. Um, because I think he can win here. Um, you know, and, and is it the most likely outcome? Probably not. But I'm getting two and a half times what the other guys that I think can do well. I think if he qualifies well, that that number gets shorter. And I think, I think he's shown some stuff. And I think SHR is a lot less of a dumpster fire this year. And we've seen Harvick be decent here. We've seen Almarola be decent here. We've seen Briscoe be decent here. So maybe, like I said, at shorter, flatter, uh, and super speedways is where I want to get my SHR exposure. And shorter, flatter season is upon us. Yeah, but the one thing I will say, though, too, it's almost like you have a 50-50 shot oh, really? of the SHR guys doing good. Because in Vegas, it was Noah Graxon and uh, – Chase Briscoe that showed good at some point throughout the day while Josh Berry and Ryan priest were nowhere to be seen for the entirety of the race. Yep. And I think the same is going to happen this weekend. Like they're all in cars that have done well here before Briscoe has a tremendous history at shorter flat tracks, especially in Phoenix. Uh, the 10 with Almarola did okay. Harvick was really good in the four. So it'll be interesting to see what Barry does. And then Ryan priest, if you go back to Ryan, uh, Ryan over at I fantasy race, he notes like he's actually been, good i wouldn't call it great or really good but you know he's been decent at these types of tracks so you know do you think all four shr cars are going to be hooked up and have speed no effing chance is that happening so yeah. you know you're you're banking on one or two of the guys to hit on it and that it's going to be briscoe i'm sure i picked the wrong one i do that pretty <laughs> consistently but i i am on board at pet rivers has them at 30 so i will jump on that uh, is there anybody else in terms of longer shots that you want to get exposure to on the card that you want to make sure um, you're grabbing now or at least talking about as a potential target um, before we jump over and look at some of the other finishing stuff? Are we going to hit the look, I was just going to say I was just going to say that like the fact that they're hanging Michael McDowell at 150 to one. Uh, I mean, he didn't show well in Vegas, so that's kind of disappointing. I lost yeah. my. McDowell over Stenhouse uh, bet I made at Superbook. Um, but but somebody much smarter than us in the space, Mr. Chris Wormy, was all over that as well. That was his best bet if you listen to Stay Green Pod. So uh, clearly I was on to something there. Uh, but in the same mold of Joey Logano's qualifying efforts so far this year, like Michael McDowell has been fast. And yeah. I know he's not great. But if he can show any semblance of speed, this is going to be that Cindric number that went from 150 to 80 or 150 to 70. Right. But are we just Austin Cindri Cindricking ourselves into fake value that's actually not going to be able to win a race? Look, I know for a fact that BetMGM, you can sell bets. You can cash out bets. So if if you could find this at BetMGM for any number, 100 or longer, I would bet that for five bucks. And then if he qualifies inside the top 10, you're probably cashing that out at like $6 and something said. So for other people who are betting larger amounts, you know, you're probably getting a, a, a decent interest payment on that because he's <laughs> not going to go off at a hundred to one at, at yeah. many races this season. Like that team is much better as a tier one 
team now uh, with the alliance with Penske. Caesars has them at 150. I don't know. I'm tempted. Yeah, but I don't think you can cash out there the same way that you can at like BetMGM. But like 0.1 units at 150 to one is not fun. (laughs) (sighs) I'll ponder it. I'll tweet it out if I end up doing that. Uh, Oh, gosh. Let's see here. I mean, again, we are not advocating for you to go place even a hundred dollar bet on that. It's this is like literal couch change that you find. We're just dart throwing. We're like, is it really worth the dart throw or are you just getting a little CLV? So that's kind of where where we're at. Obviously, when we're recording this, there's not everything up. We have top threes and top fives. We have some winning manufacturers, that kind of stuff. So let's look at uh, should we look at like top Chevy, top Toyota, top Ford? See if we can find some value. So Larson, 175. Byron, 260. Chastain, plus 360. Is that enough value given how much we like all three of these drivers? So the one thing I'll say about Chastain there, and and possibly Byron. Man, that's really hard because, I mean, you would expect if they're competing for top Chevy, they're probably also competing for the race win so you need to look at what the difference is in those two things and then also check their top three numbers so like i would rather hit chastain three to one at a top three than the top chevy because he could still have william byron or kyle larson finish ahead of him that's a good point i was thinking the the longer odds yeah especially if we like the chevy so much yeah because like in for the case for Byron at 225, why bet that when you could bet him top Chevy and he finishes second or third to Kyle Larson? Like you're basically betting the same thing at much higher value at taking the top Chevy boot, in my opinion. But we just talked about it. What if what if he's top three but doesn't beat Larson and or Chastain? Then you're getting yeah, two- the likelihood of two of, of a Chevy finishing in front of him that when there's only two spots available, is it worth sacrificing the almost half a half a point it's only two spots i think so i think when I you think... have ryan blaney you have logano up there you have christopher bell you have all the toyotas that could potentially be up front like i would rather have i think i'd rather bet byron at plus 225 to top three than plus 260 to top chevy i think plus 360 versus um three to one i think is starting to get a little more interesting yeah, see, I would rather bet three to one Chastain top three. And then, how does that make sense? Because you just, you just said I'm, you want the yeah. longer number. Because I they're... think it's I think it's more likely that we're looking at another Kyle Larson William Byron matchup of them two, as opposed to I think Chastain has a higher likelihood of possibly being the third best Chevy than do William Byron or Kyle Larson. Interesting. So I would rather bet Byron, who to me is on equal on equal standing with Kyle Larson. So you're getting better value in the top Chevy market than bet Chastain, who I would say is a ring lower than those two guys in the HMS camp. Interesting. That's just my my thinking there. Yeah, I, I think I'd rather bet Larson <laughs> or bet Byron top three and Chastain top Chevy. Because I feel like if Chastain pops, he really pops. Where I feel safer about Byron being more consistent. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're literally saying if Chastain pops, then he's gonna get top three, right? No, I think if Chastain pops, he's getting top Chevy and probably com- and getting the win. Well, then just th- that's the thing, though. If you want to get paid on him, just bet him on the outright. Yeah, but plus three sixty is nice. Um, all right, all right, let's. <laughs> Let's move on to more more debatable thing like like more Toyotas like uh Ch- like Chris Bell at three and a half three point three point two. I don't hate Truex here. Yeah, I mean, especially in a market like this, like we don't think he can. We necessarily think he can win, but he could be the third best car, or fourth best car behind three Chevys, and still get top Toyota. Yeah, and it's not like Christopher Bell has been a world beater in Phoenix either. Neither has Denny Hamlin. Hamlin hasn't have, he doesn't have a finish better than eighth in the next gen car here, while Christopher Bell only has shit. He's only got one finish uh, better than tenth, and that was sixth in the spring last year because he wrecked during the fall race. 
Yeah. And the only reason why Bell, I think, would have finished better than than his previous best, which was the sixth place finish in the spring, would have been because he was one of the championship four contenders, not because he was one of the best four cars. It would have just been the same crap we see all the time. Like the championship four cars are given a little extra boost, yeah. you know, and they're always going to finish better than everybody else. So, yeah, so Truex was awesome here in 2021. We got one in the spring and then second place in the fall. He was bad in 2022, finishing 35th after an accident, but started 20th. So it was just a bad day in general. Um, then the fall race, he was fifth after stage one, third after stage two, and ended up finishing 15th, 17th in this race last year, and then ended up getting six after starting second um, was in the top 10, basically all day. So do we buy kind of what we saw last year from Truex and expect him to be really strong again? Or do we think like, cause I'm with you that mid that uh, finish seems nice. The kind of a mid pack performer before there, but like even in terms of speed, like he wasn't very good here at the spring race, but then figured stuff out was good at Richmond was good at gateway one, New Hampshire, had a really bad Richmond too, and then figured stuff out for Phoenix too. So are we buying Truex and we think, cause I'm really tempted to add that three fifty. I was just going to say like you, me talking about it. And then you talking is really making me want to add this. <laughs> or right. we should run through the right. hills and not bet it. Cause we're, we're talking ourselves. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is something uh, that my wife, my wife, blasts me on all the time is that I'll be like, Oh yeah, on the show, I talked about this, this, and this. And she's like, well, were you able to get action on it? And I'm like, no, because the odds that were available to me on the offshore were crappy compared to what is available at the, at the books like that we want to bet on. So I didn't put money on it because I, I, I'm not going to surrender a full point or yeah. point and a half on something when I know that it's available somewhere else at way better odds. Well, and it's even like last, like I talked about, we, we talked about Larson. We talked about a few guys. We talked about Noah Gragson and I didn't add any of them to the card and they all came through. So I'm, I'm adding true X. Yeah. I'm going to do it too. So this is very bad omen. We'll, we'll just say bet, bet somebody <laughs> else, bet bell, bet Gibbs. Yeah. Um, let's talk top Fords. Blaney, big favorite. Good Lord. Do you trust anyone? Brisky business. Plus five fifty, Josh Berry twenty two to one, Ryan Priest. I'm not going anywhere near those guys at the bottom. I well, okay. So Logano. I don't hate the Logano thing because that's kind of what I did with this last weekend by taking Blaney top Ford. Because I mean, if anybody in the Ford camp is going to top Blaney, it's going to be Logano, in my opinion. Just because we don't we don't know what we have out of the RFK guys. Yeah. Um, but like, okay. If Blaney's the top Ford, a Ford, uh, let me, let me go back to this real fast. So Ford's won both 2022 races in the next gen car. So, I mean, top finishing Ford was the race winner inside the top three. And then Blaney runner up during the spring last year and runner up in the fall. So why bet him top forward when you can get top three at plus two ten? Yeah, no, I which think is essentially top forward. I think that's a great call. And I mean, yeah, I, I, honestly, sense. you know what I'm going to bet? And I know it's probably not the sexiest number, but I think it's worth betting. Assuming it's not minus money. Yeah. I'm betting Ryan Blaney to top 10 or top five at plus plus one ten. Yeah. I don't, I I, I don't hate that either because then you're allowing for two extra spots where he misses out on. And then, you know, looking at his toughest competition for the top forward uh, battle, Joey Logano, Logano is somebody who I could envision finishing worse than like fourth or fifth, maybe finishing sixth and being the top forward finisher. If that were the case, because Blaney suffered an issue or something of that nature. And then you have a, gaggle of toyotas and chevys that finish inside the top five <laughs> gaggle is a great word nice word <laughs> yeah um, so, so blaney at phoenix going back to 2019 he's effing third, incredible. third 37th with an accident sixth 
10th since uh, 2021. 10th, 4th, 4th, 2nd, 2nd, 2nd. So, like, this guy is just, he puts it near the front, he keeps it there, and he has a great performance. One, you know, incredible driver rating. Um, you know, bright, like Brian said, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe top Ford is a little bit better at plus 140, but I would rather do plus 110, get five, four, five spots where he could finish. And even oh, yeah, you're getting a huge. Logano pulls yeah. his head out of his butt or something random happens with an SHR car or Blaney's like third and not really in contention to win or fourth and not really in contention to win. He's not going to push it, especially if his teammates in front of him. So give me the top five at, at plus plus one ten, And, uh, I, I love that. I love that bet. Yeah. So, so I'm actually going to add, uh, Blaney in the top three market over at Superbook plus two fifty. That's not bad either. That is, um, does action have top five numbers that we can actually bet? Cause I'm wondering if I can get a better, like DraftKings has it at minus minus one ten, So that's interesting. Yeah. Plus money on that is really good. Yeah. Especially knowing how well he qualifies. Like he's probably going to qualify on the front two rows, the front couple rows here. So yeah. you're, you're not going to see that number. It's probably going to go off. Especially top five number minus minus one forty. Minus 150, I would assume, once we get to the race day on Sunday. Yeah. 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 No, I'm 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 very happy with that bet. And that's why I like talking these out because I end up finding falling into stuff that that I like a lot. Um all right, should we look at fast? I'm very tempted, admittedly, to add the Logano top forward as a bit of a hedge there on Blaney. Well, and the cool thing about that is those are two bets that you could legitimately win, like both of them. Like you could if get they a, finish like the championship race in twenty twenty three, yeah. Or even if you just take like Logano top four and Ryan Blaney top five, and get both of them in the top five with three hundred guys or three Chevy guys, that seems very like sometimes there's weeks where like it could happen, but it doesn't it seems very thin to happen. Yeah. This week it feels very very possible. Like. You tell me that like Denny or Truex or Bell or whatever Toyota you want to put in there, plus two of the HMS guys or Ross take up three of the first five spots and then you get Logano and Blaney or maybe Blaney's, you know, Logano second, Blaney's fourth, whatever you want to do. Like it's very possible that both of them finish in the top five and Logano's one spot in front and Logano gets fastest forward and uh, Blaney gets um, top five and then you end up cashing both those bets. Yeah, and I think it's also important to note that Ryan Blaney leads all current drivers in the next-gen car at Phoenix in total laps led, too. So we're not talking about a guy who's running outside the first couple of spots very often. All right, I pulled up the qualifying. Um, I didn't find much last week. I I got on a Cindric, um, but outside of that, I'm trying to tweet those out each and every week of the ones that I'm actually betting and I'm actually interested in um, from a... From a uh, Season long or from each and every week, I guess. Um, so Kyle Larson, obviously, right, then Byron and then Blaney. Um, Logano is nine to one. Is that compelling for you or is that a little too short? I know we like to be more of like that, like kind of 12 to 15 range as a, a qualifier, but as good as he is getting almost double digits seems nice. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate that. I just, the same way I have a hard time betting favorites, like inside five to one, same thing for qualifying. I have a really hard time putting down much action on single digit numbers for qualifying. He's like, he started second or first three times in since 2019, but those were all in the, the fall race. Every spring race is kind of a mid pack guy. So maybe, maybe not. Um, what's Briscoe? 20 to 1. I already, I already put it on the card, my friend. Oh, maybe on it. Yeah, so Briscoe is like the Austin Cindric bet this week, folks. It, it, he's going to be fast probably in the single lap speed here. He always is, or traditionally he has been. Last year, I'm completely throwing out for uh, data purposes because SHR was absolute trash in 2023, so I'm not looking at much of that data. Uh... Yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's anybody that jumps out as a, a potential value in terms of 
the starting position. Um, Kyle Busch is interesting, but he's never really like he's been kind of like in that five to eight range. So I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I love that. Um, even at eleven to one. Yeah, I just like the books are clearly not stupid because yeah. I mean. Honestly, if I were to bet somebody that was super short, it would probably be William Byron because I'm not betting three to one to put it on pole. But you're betting four to one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the thing is, is you come in and Kyle Larson is going to be the favorite in everything. So I, I, I think Byron, again, you're still getting some type of value because his car is going to be as fast. He did, uh, Blaney did put it on pole in 2022 at this race. I think he's over for a pole, though. Like, yeah, I mean, short, but it's better than four, three or four to one. <laughs> like, barely. Yeah. All right. Well, if you like anything uh, in terms of pole bets, let us know. Like, do we? Austin yeah. Cedric, 70 to one. Josh Berry, 65. Uh, let's see. Kevin Harvick started third in November. He started. Oh yeah, no. Cindric is off back in 2020. Nah, nah. I feel like we're I feel like we're reaching, Jerry. We're reaching. <laughs> yeah, we are. Not, um. All right. Let's see if there's any interesting matchups. What was it? Wait, wait, wait. Go back. What? What was Michael McDowell's odds for pole? Oh, that's. I don't hate that. Uh, fastest qualifier. McDowell McDriver is a hundred to one. I'm putting a dollar on that. So he he qualified seventh last spring here. I don't hate it. Hundred to one, like it's <laughs> that's a good. I'm uh, even. I'm gonna add that with how fast he's he's been. I like it. It's a good shout. Uh, all right, let's go up to it's so crazy, a hundred to one. Yeah, for a poll. Uh, Eric Jones is smashing Austin Cindric. Oh, this is qualifying, so that's interesting. Uh, Ooh, Suarez like over me. Burton, Elliot over or Logan over Elliot. <laughs> Byron at plus one thirty against Larson. I know Larson's dominant, but just to qualify better, plus one thirty. Byron has the better average qualifying position than than Kyle Larson. Larson has only one start better than fourth here. In the in the next gen, mind you, I'm every every data point I'm referencing is next next gen, which again could be completely moot with the new short track package. By the way, so I wouldn't get too excited. I'm adding it. I don't care. <laughs> Week. I'm going to get me a winner on Saturday. McDowell. Oh, oh, look at that. McDowell is minus 155. I was like, oh, That's we can bet wild. McDowell here. No, we can't. What is it's? What is the Logano one? It's over Chase Elliott? Yeah, minus 125, though. I might bet that. I mean, he's Elliott in, qualified he's in advance, my friend. Spring. All right, 2311 versus RCR. I kind of like RCR plus money. Just... I'm betting that. I'm in a turn of events. Brian has become a Logano betting stan. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It's, it's a 2311 versus RCR. Yeah, and you get plus money with RCR. Oh hell no! I'm not betting 2311 or RCR over 2311. Why not? Just the cars are. I guess that's fair. Yeah, if you put Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon in the twenty three eleven cars, and Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick in the other ones, the, the twenty three eleven would win every single time. What about Stuart Haas minus one ten versus RFK? You're basically betting Chase Briscoe versus both Ke- Brad Keselowski and Chris Busher. That seems like a good bet, no? <laughs> <laughs> JGR versus Hendrick. Yeah, I don't like that either. Gregson over Suarez. Ooh. Ross over Truex. Byron versus Dennis. Uh, I don't hate the the 
Truex over Chastain because yeah, I don't a, either. I was just thinking you're getting that. a bit of a discount. I think they could probably qualify near each other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Per perfect example right there. Why would you bet either Blaney or Larson in a head-to-head -head matchup at minus money? When you can just take both of them at plus money in the top three market, yeah, like that 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 is a that's a losing bet, regardless of it, whether you hit it or not, in my opinion. Yeah, no that that seems reasonable. All right, uh, we've gone over an hour. Let's review the card. Let's give the people our favorite bet as we sit here right now, and let's get out of here. <sighs> da -da. Hey, Briscoe, thirty to one. Martin Truex, top Toyota. Ryan Blaney top five, Briscoe to put it on pole, McDriver to put it on pole, and Larson Byron over Larson for qualifying. I'm gonna add one or two outrights from the Larson Byron Chastain Blaney group. I'm not really sure what yet. I'm hopefully gonna figure that out. Brian is on pole bets with Briscoe and McDowell. Um, he's got the Marty Party to top Toyota. He's got Blaney top three at plus two fifty. And he's qualifying Logano over Elliott. Brian Twining, as we sit here on a Tuesday, uh, what's your favorite bet that you're eyeing right now? It's going to be the Martin Truex Jr. Top Toyota, my yeah, friend. I like that. I, I like the value there. Uh, I mean, I think just consistent wise, in the same breath that we, we talked about, Kevin Harvick, uh, like last year and more so the previous year, he was just so good at maintaining that track position inside, like near the top five. Uh -huh. I think if he can do that and just avoid mistakes, I think he's so much less risk. He presents so much less risk than a Denny, a Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs, all the other guys, Reddick, Bubba, you know, and then the legacy guys, they're not even in the question. Yep. I like where your head's at. I'm going Blaney top five, as we talked about. Like, I like the top four. I like him over, like, in top three. But I just think the top five at the number is so much safer and so much, um, you know, more likely that I'm just going to ride that. And hopefully that's the the ticket. And it gets me a nice little base for the week. And then, obviously, we can hit some bigger numbers um, for fun. And then, obviously, Brian and I will be back um, on Saturday uh to talk DraftKings to update the betting outright betting card uh the outpour of support over the last couple of weeks has been yes. amazing Incredible. we really appreciate the likes the subscribes the shares the whatever you guys are doing um it's it's working so we really really appreciate all the support appreciate everybody who's been asking questions who's been leaving feedback who's joined us on grid rivals who's subscribed to the Substack. Uh, we have a lot of fun and, and really enjoy doing this stuff. Um, so to see all the support and appreciation from you all um, is very much appreciated. And we uh, we can't thank everybody enough. So if you get to subscribe, please do that. We're working ever closer to a thousand. Um, you know, uh, I, I, 250 away is something that I didn't, I don't think Brian and I thought would be uh, no. talking about at least this season. So uh, appreciate everybody who's been supporting. It really does mean a lot to us. We will be back. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Ask us questions. We can chat throughout the week. Make sure you turn in the net. tune in to the NASCAR betting preview show. Make sure you subscribe to Chris Wormy's pre-race poll on Sunday mornings. Uh, for everybody in the NASCAR community, that's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.